Hey friend, I've been waiting for you. I'm Parker. I'd say welcome, but most don't think of this as a very welcoming place. Geez, I sound like an old man, but I'm really not. I've only been dead for 17 years, but with all that time, you can learn a lot. Here, come follow me. I can show you around. Some guys have been here since the dawn of man, just like Bob. Hey, Bob. Yeah, no one knows his real name, so just call him Bob. Oh, and by the way, just as a disclaimer, this is our version of the afterlife. Not everyone sees this the same way. Anyway, if you're going to stick around, you better know about our history. Evidence of us ghosts date back as far as the Mesopotamian era, but only because that's when people started writing things down. Honestly, who knows how long we've been haunting the living. Okay, literally, who chose this music? Stop! Anyway, the concept of ghosts stemmed from the Mesopotamian belief that physical death was not the ultimate end, and that existence continues on in the form of spirits. And the best part about being a spirit is that you get to wear the same sweatshirt for the rest of eternity. Vintage. As I was saying, the Mesopotamians called their afterlife Urkala, or Land of No Return. Sounds like a sick emo band, right? Urkala was a realm beneath the earth, where Gidim, the original word for spirits, would go. Some Gidim would come back to earth to offer advice to loved ones, but most of them would haunt the living, particularly if they experienced a wrongful death or improper funeral. In these cases, the Mesopotamians would ask an Asu, or a doctor, to cast spells and exorcise them, which, trust me, is not fun for either side. Now, ancient Egypt, on the other hand, well, their beliefs were a little more complicated. So basically, in Egyptian mythology, the soul is divided into five parts, but the two that you need to know about are the Ba and the Ka, which together make up the Ak, and what we might call ghosts today. As long as a person were treated well before and after their death, their spirit would peacefully travel into the field of reeds, which was believed to be a replica of their life on Earth. Then, there would be no reason to return to the living. But, if something went sour somewhere along the way, and an Ak needed to make peace, well, that's a different story. That's when the Ak would come back to Earth and haunt the living. A common theme here I'm seeing, no? Oh yeah, and those guys over there? Those are the ancient Greek and Roman ghosts. Turns out they needed to be buried with a coin in their mouth for passage across the river Styx in the underworld. But clearly that didn't happen. Now all those poor ghosts are stuck in the world with the living forever. But that's the whole thing about us ghosts. Despite the culture, we tend to want one simple thing. To be treated and buried properly. Do that and we probably won't haunt you. Boo. I said probably. Hey, meet my buddy Kevin. Hey Parker. Sorry about that, but you gotta take advantage of the newbies. You understand. Don't feel bad about it. Kevin did the same thing to me 17 years ago. Man, I feel like that was just yesterday. That's probably because you've been dead for 1600 years. Well, you gotta entertain yourself somehow. In China, the belief in ghosts stems from ancestor worship, which is very important in our culture. Once a person passes away, they are not expected to come back to the land of the living, so if they return, it is believed an evil force is involved, unless it's an ancestor delivering a message through a dream. On the 15th day of the 7th month of the Chinese calendar, we celebrate the Ghost Festival, where people pass by ghosts by leaving out food and offerings. It's my favorite day of the year. You're always thinking about food, aren't you? In India, ghosts are also present, but instead they're called boots. <laughs> no, not those boots. B-H-O-O-T-S. Boots look a little different than ghosts in our other cultures, because they are believed to have backward feet and surface when a person dies too soon. In fact, many people today believe that cremation started out of the fear that boots would possess the living. If boots are able to find peace, they are free from the world and go into the process of reincarnation, which is why there's less ghosts in this neck of the woods. I can talk about a bunch of other cultures if you want, but I'm sensing you get the point. Different cultures across the world dating back hundreds and thousands of years believe in ghosts and the continuation of the soul and the afterlife, and many cultures celebrate us too. In Mexico, they celebrate the Day of the Dead, which originated from Mayan culture, and Celtic culture brought us Halloween. Oh, Halloween, that reminds me, I have the best costume. Oh right, costumes. The Celts wore masks on Savannah, which was their new year, to disguise themselves from the harmful spirits that came out during this time. Eventually, this all became Halloween. Look, I'm a ghost. Kev, you might want to work on that. Yeah, that didn't work out the way I thought it would. I'll be right back. Anyway, even though there are quite a few holidays celebrating us ghosts, the living are pretty scared of us.
And that's the thing though, death is universal, so people can't help but be drawn to us, even if they fear us. Sometimes we're made out to be friendly on television, but usually we're scaring the shit out of people. We've been doing it for ages, and I don't see it stopping now, so welcome aboard, friend. You'll learn so much in the next few hundred years.